There have been many great cinematographers over the years, praised for different abilities like immersing the audience, building a world, and more. But one cinematographer has been praised many times for his experimental and yet naturalistic ways. This is Janusz Kaminski. Janusz Kaminski is a Polish-American cinematographer known for films like Schindler's List, Saving Private Ryan, and more. Janusz was born in Ziebicz, Poland in 1959. Due to the imposition of martial law in 1981, Janusz pleaded for political asylum in Vienna and soon immigrated to the United States. Once in the United States, Janusz took on many jobs and soon enrolled at Columbia College, studying film and fine arts. While there, on random happenstance in class, Janusz was selected to be the class's cinematographer on a student film. It was during this time where Janusz was able to be behind the camera for the first time that he realized he loved it. In Janusz's own words, I liked the whole thing with the camera that you could actually put your hands on. You could focus the image. You could move the camera. You could light and you could get the image. It was very exciting. After Columbia College, Janusz went on to the American Film Institute to take a one-year cinematography course. After that one year, Janusz began working on grade B thrillers, doing a lot of work with Roger Corman. He first started out as a gaffer and then slowly started filming Rogers' features, working up the ladder. During this time, he filmed Wildflower, a television film with Diane Keaton. Janusz often refers to this film as his breakout film, the film that got him noticed. And the person that noticed him was none other than Steven Spielberg. During this time, Spielberg was working on his first Jurassic Park film, but fell in love with Janusz's cinematography and asked him to help him create Schindler's List. Janusz, of course, accepted, and there blossomed a new partnership. Janusz became Spielberg's first pick for cinematographer, and together they made films such as Schindler's List, Jurassic Park, Amistad, Saving Private Ryan, Minority Report, Catch Me If You Can, War of the Worlds, War Horse, Lincoln, BFG, The Post, and Ready Player One, five of which were nominated for Best Cinematography in the Academy Awards, and two of which won, those being Schindler's List and Saving Private Ryan. Schindler's List was Janusz and Spielberg's first film together, and one of the best made. One reason for the unique look of this film is Janusz's ideology regarding film. In a 2007 interview, Janusz said, The cinematographer needs to understand the script and translate words into images. Regrettably, many of us often fail to resist the desire to produce beautiful shots. It's a mistake. The cinema is like life. It's not always beautiful. That's why you need to have real world images under your eyelids to recreate reality in the studio. And this is exactly how Janusz created Schindler's List. Through research, 
Janusz stumbled across many black and white photographs and used them as inspiration for the film. These photos are what led Janusz to make the film in black and white, hoping to get as close to reality as possible. This naturalistic air is often the key to Janusz's films. In films like Schindler's List and Saving Private Ryan, Janusz took a documentary-esque style to shooting them. Schindler's List is known for many, many different iconic scenes, but one of the most iconic is the scene with the little girl in red. In this scene, we can see Janusz's approach to a more documentary-like style. The first thing we see is Oscar Schindler, the film's protagonist. Already, the film looks very raw, kind of grainy. The lighting is rather plain and gives it a very real look. The next shot exactly shows Janusz's style. The shot again is raw and grainy and this time even slightly out of focus. The film looks old and worn down, as if it had survived through the years, but hasn't been handled with care. The subject isn't clear aside from the unique pop of color in the little girl's coat. The camera itself is a little shaky, with choppy camera movement, trying to stay on the little girl. We then go to a shot of Schindler and Victoria Klonowska. First, we're on Victoria, but as she looks to Schindler to see his reaction to the little girl, the camera uses a choppy motion to look at Schindler as well, like a documentary camera operator switching from subject to subject to get raw, immediate reactions. Camera movement motivated by the actors. Again, we have another tight telephoto lens shot following the little girl. It's clear the camera operator is far away, understandably so, as one would want to stay as far away from such brutal action as possible. Next, once again, the camera pans searching for the little girl and following her once she's found. To reach his goal of making films as similar to real life as possible, Janusz even goes so far as to experiment with different lighting styles that most filmmakers make sure to stay away from. In the 2017 film, The Post, Janusz did just this. He decided that to make the film as realistic as possible, he really wanted to stick true to what an office lighting looks like, and that is the overhead lighting. Many filmmakers always warn against overhead lighting as it creates shadows under the character's eyes and other places, but Janusz wanted to be as true to life as possible, a running theme throughout his films. But even in an earlier film like Saving Private Ryan, Janusz didn't use this overhead lighting, juxtaposing the post's office lighting with that in Saving Private Ryan the difference is extremely evident. The post is a lot more saturated and brighter, whereas Saving Private Ryan is dark and dramatic. The tones of these two movies are very clear, and that is clear through the lighting. Janusz's films are easily household names across the USA as well as the rest of the world. And as the times are changing, 
and CGI is becoming more and more a regular part of filmmaking. Janusz is also out there learning more so that he can still be at the forefront of the filmmaking world.